Last week, I suggested that if Jesus is our shepherd, we should be following him daily. Not just with our lips, but in our actions too. And one action I recommended we take is to spend 30 minutes a day reading three or four chapters in the Bible so that we might see and walk with Jesus found in the scriptures. I'm not sure how many of us gave it a try this past week. I'm hoping some. And I'm hoping maybe this week a few more might do so. One thing I said we would possibly notice as we read through the scriptures that tell us of the story of time Jesus walked among us was that over time we would begin to fill in the blanks that our lectionary leaves. Something else we might notice too, especially when it comes to the four gospel accounts, we might notice their similarities. As many have probably learned before, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels because they tell a common story. Not just in the parables they use to tell this story or in the miracles they describe that is proof for them that the teachings of Jesus are true, but in their familiar descriptions of the life and ministry of Jesus. The sequence of events might differ slightly from account to account, but the story and the good news is the same. In Jesus, the kingdom of heaven had come near. Now John's account's a little bit different. He's less of a reporter of the things that happen, the miracles or the teachings of Jesus. Instead, John's purpose for writing is to offer proof that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ, the Son of God, so that believers in him might know eternal life. John uses no parables to tell his story, but instead offers signs or miracles that do not only bear witness to the truth of the message Jesus preaches, but in John's opinion, proves Jesus is the Christ. Of the 37 miracles the Bible attributes to Jesus, John tells us of seven. Five of which are unique to John's account. Of the other two, one appears in Matthew and Mark, not Luke. And one, one is in all four gospel accounts. And we find both of these two in today's gospel reading. The story of the feeding of the 5,000 using five loaves and two fish is the, the, the miracle, the story that is contained in all four accounts. And other than the setting, the events told, described in each account are almost identical. Jesus desires to feed those who are hungry. And after giving thanks for the offerings that he had, he breaks them and shares them with the people, who then return to their homes, according to John, having had enough, according to the synoptics, having been satisfied. As they left, the fragments, the remaining fragments of their meal are picked up and they wind up with 12 baskets of food, much more than the meager offerings of five loaves and two fish they started with. It's no wonder that this story then becomes so central to the story of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Other than the manna in the desert, during the exodus out of Egypt, there is nothing like it before, and I would argue nothing like it since. The other miracle we hear about in today's gospel reading, the one that's found in both Matthew and Mark and not Luke, is Jesus walking on the water. 
why Luke leaves this detail out of the events that happened on this particular day to just make this day like no other that the disciples have had with Jesus, nobody knows. What we do know is that together, these two miracles are pivotal in John's understanding of who Jesus has be is. Because they form the introduction into what are known as seven I am statements that Jesus makes. Statements that according to Billy Graham are complete, he is completing the unfinished answer given to Moses when Moses asks, when I go to lead the people out of captivity, who do I say sent them? God's answer, tell them I am sent you. We're going to spend the entire month of August looking at this first I am statement that Jesus proclaims to be about himself. Before we jump back into, Matt, into Mark's account, where we will then hear Jesus ask his disciples, well, who do you say that I am? It is then we will hear Peter's profession of who Jesus is, the Messiah, the Holy One of God. I wonder how many of us today, like Peter, would be able to make such a profession of faith. I don't mean to imply that anyone here doesn't believe this, but I believe the sky is blue and the grass is green, that the sun makes things hot and ice makes things cold, but so what? What difference does believing something to be true make in our lives? I guess it depends how much that truth impacts our lives that determines whether it is important enough for us to take notice of it or not. But how do we determine if a particular truth impacts our lives if we do not know what the implications of that truth are? And this is where it gets a little dicey. Do we accept the implications as we are told by others or do we investigate them on our own? Now, I'm not suggesting that we should tempt fate to determine the consequences that might befall us for ignoring a truth. But I do believe we have a responsibility to do our own investigating. Studying the witness of those who have encountered that truth before and its consequences. Now, many of us probably do this without even thinking about it. Many of us go read reviews, don't we? Before we make a major purchase about a product? Or how about researching the implications or the impact of a ballot proposition before we vote for it or not? Or how many of us have ever picked up a how-to book or watched a video before doing something we have never done before? I suspect most of us have done that at least once or twice in our lives and been thankful that we did. If we do this to understand the impact of things in our everyday life, why don't we do more of this when we examine our lives in Christ? Why do we research deeply one thing and simply accept somebody's word on another. Maybe it's because we perceive that person to be an expert in their field. But we all know experts who have presented findings that, shall we say, are a little flawed. Or we can't understand because they speak so far over our head. Or who we discover are really only experts in their own mind. It is incumbent upon us to do our own research to know if what we are being told is truth or not. Especially when the failure to grasp that real truth can significantly impact our lives. Near the end of his gospel account, John says that there are many more things that are there to talk about that are not written in his book about Jesus. But that these things are written 
so that people might believe. In the epistles attributed to John, we see that for John, this belief, this faith, is not something just to be professed, but is something to be lived. In today's gospel, John bears witness to what God can do when we offer what we have in faith. Not only in feeding the 5,000, but in those times in our lives when we struggle, the reassurance of God's grace in our midst. Don't just take my word for it. Read about it yourself. In doing so, you might just find how often God has taken what we have to offer and turned it into a blessing, if not for ourselves, for others. Knowing the truth here, beyond just hearing the truth, can change how we live our lives in ways that can bring the blessings of God's grace and love, not only into our lives, but into the lives of others who we meet along the way. Amen. Amen.